function for a player in the voluntary contribution mechanism, which was the version of the public goods game. So just remind ourselves, what do we see there? Pi i, the payoff to a player, is equal to their endowment, y i, minus what they contribute, c i, plus m, the marginal propensity, the marginal per capita return, multiplied by the contributions of all players, i equal to 1 n. Now let's quickly parameterize this and think about what that would mean. So our parameters here are m and n. Those are two that we care about and also the endowment that each player starts off with. So let's start off and say that m is equal to 0 0.5. So our marginal per capita return is equal to 0 0.5. We're also going to assume that n is equal to 4. There are four players playing our public goods game or our voluntary contribution mechanism. I'm also going to assume that each player starts off with a, an endowment equal to $10. Now with this, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the interaction substantially um, from what we typically see in an experiment. And to think through why this looks a bit like a prisoner's dilemma game or a social dilemma, what we want to think about here is what happens if I, as a player, have to make the decision to contribute or not contribute. Now, with these $10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say there are two options that I can potentially have and that other players can potentially have in this game. We're going to say I can either contribute, C, and that means that I give all $10. That means I'm contributing everything to the public good. Or, I'm going to say don't, and in that case, my contribution is going to be equal to zero. Now, in the simplified version of the game, what we're going to see is that this is going to be true similarly for other players in the game. Now, how are we going to structure this game? We're going to structure it in the following way. I'm going to draw my payoff table for me as player one, and I'm playing against other players two through four. So I'm going to summarize all those players' two through four's um, actions over here. And in this case, what we're going to think about is four different potential outcomes. Either I contribute when everyone else contributes, or I do not contribute when everyone else contributes, or I contribute when no one else contributes, and I don't contribute and everyone else also does not contribute. So those are going to be the four potential outcomes that we're going to think about here. Now, if we were actually playing this game in a lab, what would typically happen is that people have many, many, many other options because they're typically going to be able to give in increments of, for example, one dollar. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and all the other players can have those same choices. So there would be many, 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 many other outcomes that we would observe in a laboratory. However, we just want to simplify this and think through why this looks a bit like a social dilemma, or why this is a social dilemma, and why it looks a bit like a, um, a prisoner's dilemma game. Okay. So let's think this through. Here we have our payoff function up here. And I now want to think through what happens if all players contribute. So if all players contribute, it means that all players are giving $10, and those $10 are all going into the public good. So if all other players and I contribute $10, that means that there are $40 in the public good. All of us have access to that. It is not excludable and it is non-rival. I take those $40, I multiply it by the MPCR, the multiplier is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 40 is $20. So here, notice I'm only going to show my payoffs just to show you what happens with my choice about what a strictly dominant strategy would be. So I get $20 here when I contribute and everyone else contributes. Okay. Now here's the question though. What's going to happen if I do not contribute and everyone else contributes? So when we saw that 20, what we had was I started off with 10, I then contributed 10, so therefore these first two terms here, 10 minus 10, that was 0. I then had 0 0.5 times 40, giving me a total of 20. Now for the second cell here, I have to think about what's going on with these first two um, uh, terms here. So yi, that is going to be equal to my $10. CI, that's going to be equal to zero. But if everyone else is contributing, what is happening? There are going to be $30 in that public good. And what do I get? I get 0.5 times 30, which is $15. So what we can see is going to happen then is I get 10 
minus 0 plus 15, which means I get $25. So notice there, I got the $10 that were mined down when I didn't contribute anything, and I got 0.5 times 30, which the contributions of all the other players. So I have $25 there versus 20 when I contributed and everyone did too. Now here's what we want to think about. What's going to happen if I contribute and no one else does? So in this case, yi, I start off with 10. What happens then? I give 10, so therefore we have 0 over here in these first two terms. I give 10 to the public good. No one else has given anything to the public good. There's only $10 here. 10 times 0.5, what does that leave me with? $5. Okay, so what happened there? I started off with 10, I contributed 10, leaving me with zero, but there was $10 in the public good. I get 0.5 times those $10, which leaves me with $5. And then finally, if I don't contribute, and no one else contributes either, we all just keep our $10. So notice over here, it's just 10. YI equal to 10, CI equal to 0, public good equal to 0, 0 0.5 times 0 is 0, we're just left with $10. So looking at this, what can we see? We can evaluate it using standard game theory. If I'm comparing a payoff of 20 and a payoff of 25, what do I prefer? 25 is greater than 20, I prefer 25. Similarly, 10 is greater than 5, what does that tell me? I prefer 10 to 5, because 10 is greater than 5. This tells me that against any strategy profile of the other players, D, or don't contribute, gives me a higher payoff, therefore D is the strictly dominant strategy. What we see here is that our prediction is that players should not contribute to this game. No player should contribute anything to the public good. But as we see in the papers that we're reading, people regularly contribute. We all often end up at the outcome where players are all contributing substantial amounts of money, even though we see that the um, self-interested outcome is for no one to contribute anything. Now we're going to see how this also differs among different groups of people. Often what's going to happen is that people will start off contributing, maybe one or two don't, and then many people end up at not contributing anything towards the end of the game if the game is repeated several times. And we're also going to see how in another um, set of experiments, when we added punishment as an additional layer onto this, I can punish people who don't contribute, and then that results in greater cooperation when we um, look at the experiment, experimental results.